One night, while my family and some friends were talking about paranormal and overall weird things that have happened in our lives, my mom drops this bombshell that I knew nothing about over the course of my entire life. We had just moved into this house not too far from my hometown. Kind of rural and out in the country, it was a decently sized two-story suburban house. We moved in and everything was fine and dandy up until one day when my mom was bathing me and my brother. We must have been toddlers at the time because I have no recollection of this. She said that I looked up into the corner of the bathroom and said, Mommy, why is that skinny old lady staring at us? And my mom was understandably shocked and she goes, What lady? To which my brother says, The gray old lady up in the corner. At that point, my mom grabbed me and my brother out of the tub and went to my grandparents' house immediately. She said what was most terrifying about this was how calm me and my brother were about it. Apparently, this wasn't the only time we mentioned this lady, but my mom never told us those other instances. Just wait, it gets weirder. There was this time around Christmas when I woke up in the middle of the night about six to eight years old to see all my toys simultaneously going off all at the same time. Lights and horns blaring, songs, all the stuff you'd expect children's toys to do. Well, as a little kid, I wasn't scared, so the next morning I told my dad, to which he told me, that's what toys do when they're out of batteries. I never thought much of this at all my whole life because it seemed so inconsequential, but after my mom told us about the story with my brother, I remembered it and my jaw dropped. Even reminding my dad about this, he said he only told me that so I wouldn't be scared. And here's the worst part. Because of my mom being superstitious and afraid of the house, she started doing research and found that a fucking cult used to live there. What she found out while doing research was that this cult had moved in with the old woman who initially owned the house. This husband and wife duo who ran services from the house. The husband believed that he was the second coming of Christ or something, and the wife was an angel or some shit. While the details are fuzzy for me, what I can remember is that they starved the old woman to death, and her fucking bedroom was me and my brother's room. That was the room where she died. This story just kept getting more and more insane as it went on, like, <laughs> holy fuck. What really irks me about this one is the fact that them and their brother saw this weird gray old lady at the exact same time as kids. Like, imagine you're giving your kids a bath and they both say that at the same exact time. Like, I'd have that house sold by the end of the week. This happened in 2013. My grandpa and I had a close relationship, and when he passed in 2008, I had a strange dream where I was in his dining room, but he wasn't there, just his voice. We then climbed his stairs to a golden door, and he told me that I couldn't come with him, but we'd see each other again. Kid stuff, my mind trying to cope. I believe in ghosts, but the pearly gates aren't something I think are real. But in 2013, after going to bed, I rolled over after hearing a noise. I turned my phone off as I was watching an ASMR video to see this tall, dark, shadowy person with a halo of rainbow light come into my room. I felt the bed compress as they got on. It was a man who sounded young, but he seemed to know me very well. I thought it was my dad at first, and that the game was over and that he had come up to say goodnight. This shit is burned into my brain. This person began talking to me. I could see their face a bit, and it looked a bit like my dad's. They asked me how school was, how everything was going. I was confused, since my dad lives with us, so he'd know all this stuff. I remember saying, Dad, you should know all this. And they just chuckled a bit and then said, I love you, good night. Got off my bed and walked out the door. When I asked my dad about it, he went white as a sheet. He asked me detailed questions like, what time was this? Can you tell me what they looked like? And stuff like that. He showed me a picture of the person I saw holding a baby. I thought at first it was my dad, but it wasn't. It was my grandpa holding my dad as a baby. The young man I saw was my grandpa, which is why the questions he was asking didn't make sense. We were both white as sheets. 
I found this next one on a subreddit that I haven't really been on before. It's the Internet Mysteries subreddit. I'm gonna read some background given by the original poster here before we go in and play actual video evidence of what happened. So, a user on the 4chan Paranormal board posted that they were staying in a Super 8 in Ontario, Canada. He was flipping through the channels, and he and his friend came across a static channel with a semi-visible face that could be seen through the static. The room had a TV channel guide which only went up to channel 68. OP was able to flip to channel 69 and 73, which is where he saw the face. I provided the links to the image here and to the video on YouTube. I ended up uploading it since OP had shared it on Discord and then shared the link. It was probably one of the more interesting things to come out of the board in a few months. The poster then attaches two links, one which contains an image of the TV guide for the hotel which goes all the way up to channel 68. The other link is to a YouTube video where we see them flipping between channels above the ones listed in the guide and, well, the rest doesn't need much of an explanation. This happened a couple of days ago, and I've been trying to find an explanation for it ever since. When I was a kid, around 11, I had a friend named Lauren. She was a pretty cool person, the type that everyone got along with. After summer break, we never saw her again, which was sad, but we just assumed that she must have moved during the break. Now, cut forward to a couple days ago. I was spending time at a theme park, and I was by myself since none of my friends wanted to go. Halfway through the day, I get something to eat and rest up for a bit. A couple of tables away from me, I see this girl that keeps looking at me, straight up staring at some points. She looked familiar, however, I couldn't figure out why. Finally, she approaches me. When she comes up, she comes up in a friendly manner talking about how it's been a while since she's seen me. Confused, I asked, I don't mean to sound rude or stupid, but who are you? At this point, she looks at me stunned and dumbfounded. She replies with, Wow, okay, I see you. It's me, Lauren. You know, your friend. I know it's been, what, almost three years since we graduated high school, but I didn't expect you to forget about me. I am shocked when I hear this. I haven't seen this girl since elementary school, but she's claiming that the last time we met was at the end of high school. I replied, High school? I haven't seen or heard of you since we were kids. What are you talking about? After going back and forth for a couple of minutes, she pulls out her phone to show me some pictures. What she showed me made my heart skip a couple beats. Since I graduated during COVID, my school held our graduation at the city's Central Park and we had a drive through graduation. At the end, you could take pictures at a socially distanced part of the park with decorations. I distinctly remember it had a giant 2020 sign. The pictures were of her in a cap and gown in front of the exact same 2020 sign. She even went as far as to show me pictures that she had saved through our high school experience. Even as far back as middle school, the exact same one that I had attended. After it was said and done, I was speechless. Lauren got up to leave before saying that she'll see me around and that it was good to see me, even if I was, quote, acting like a fool. I tried to enjoy the rest of my time at the theme park, even with everything that had just happened looming in the back of my mind. Cut to a couple of hours later, around 10 p.m., I was talking with a friend over the phone, one that I've known since childhood. I asked him if he remembered Lauren and whatever happened to her. He responded with, Lauren, the brunette girl with the freckles? Yeah, I found her on Instagram a few years ago, bro. She lives in Vermont now. He sends over her Instagram handle, and when going through it, my eyes widened and my stomach dropped. She was still in Vermont. I live in California, so unless she zoomed across the country from the time she got up and left, there's no way she could have gotten back that fast. At that point, her last post was five hours ago, and even though it was Lauren, she had tattoos in the pictures, about three on each arm, and one of them was on the back of her hand. However, she didn't have any tattoos when we were talking earlier that day, especially not one on the back of her hand. So now my mind is racing with ways to try to explain what happened. How could Lauren have gone to school with me all this time if she left during elementary school, and if the real Lauren is in Vermont, then... Who was I talking to that day? 
This one was extremely bizarre, especially since this like other version of Lauren or whoever it was actually had like photographic evidence that she was there on that graduation day and all throughout the time they were at school together. But despite all of that, according to her Instagram, she really did move to Vermont all those years ago. I'm not quite sure how to wrap my head around this story. This is definitely one of the more unexplainable ones I've been sent. My dad, grandma, grandpa, and I were attending my cousin's wedding in a small rural town just outside of South Haven, Michigan last summer. We rented a small house in town which was located in a very wooden area just off of a small lake. Something felt extremely off as soon as I got out of the car at our rental property. That's the best way I could describe it. Something felt off and I was immediately uneasy. I shrugged it off and chalked it up to being tired and anxious. The night we arrived, my dad and I were having a smoke outside and noticed how weird everything sounded. It was about 11pm and there was no one else around. The trees were crackling incredibly loudly and we were hearing strange animal noises, but nothing too out of the ordinary. Just the type of animal noises you would hear in rural Michigan. But they just sounded particularly strange to us for some reason. It was about 11pm to midnight and I was having my last smoke of the night. My grandparents were already asleep and my dad had just gotten into bed, but still wide awake watching TV. I was sitting on the stairs outside with my back to the house looking straight out into the backyard. I heard someone shout my name in a very abrupt manner, loud and fast. It sounded like they were shouting toward me from the front of the house, like they were standing on the front porch shouting for me, knowing that I was at the back. It sounded just like my dad, but it couldn't have been him because I didn't hear the front door open or close or anything. I reminded myself to stay calm, and I quickly walked back into the house. My dad was sound asleep. There was no way that by the time I got to him, he could have gotten back into bed. I woke him up and asked him if he was outside screaming my name. He looked confused and said, of course not. I started to get really freaked out at this point. I tried to go to bed but couldn't get that scream out of my head. I was up all night trying to figure out what happened. I was honestly contemplating leaving, getting a hotel room somewhere close by, and returning in the morning. Miraculously, I must have fallen asleep sometime around 3am. We woke up the next morning, and I was so ready to get the hell out of that town. As soon as we left, the uneasy feeling that I had the entire weekend disappeared. When I returned to work the next day, I told my coworker the weird experience I had. Her face immediately dropped. She proceeded to inform me that this was quite common in the Appalachian area regarding cryptids and other types of creatures. Apparently, they try to get your attention by mimicking someone close to you, and when you look up at them, they kidnap you or something along those lines. But I was in Michigan. I tried to look up information about the town I was in, but didn't find anything remotely interesting. Has anyone else had a similar experience? I had some experiences as a child that I would consider paranormal. After my teenage years, I never really opened up about them to people because of how crazy it sounds. It wasn't until several years ago that I started researching on the internet and found that I wasn't alone in seeing these strange creatures. I know it might sound silly to some, but this is what I experienced. When I was growing up, I had a best friend who lived down the street. We lived in a quiet, small town where her dad was always working. I would walk to her house every day after school, and we would often take walks, going to the liquor store to buy candy, etc. I would often see a stick man following us, peeking out from behind her couch, for example, and other areas. He was all black, and changed sizes. Sometimes the size of a small cat, other times taller than a normal-sized man. I felt very scared of him, and felt he was mischievous at best, but perhaps evil. I finally got the courage up to tell my best friend, and she admitted to seeing him too. I always got the feeling he was the same one every time, not different stick men. One time he appeared in the shape of a stick figure horse like a bad child's drawing. I always believed him to be somehow following me and watching me. That is, until my best friend passed away suddenly our senior year of high school. She had a genetic heart condition that nobody, including herself, had known about. I've never seen what we called Stickman ever since. I believe now, perhaps, he was some sort of 
grim reaper awaiting his time to take my friend. I don't know if that's really the case, but it seems odd that the sightings of him disappeared after she passed. I have to admit, there are some pretty strange circumstances surrounding the story. These experiences always become like way more complicated when they occurred to multiple people at once. I have to mention, it's very strange that this thing, this weird stick figure being or whatever, seemed to disappear right after their friend passed away. To the person who sent me this, I'm sorry to hear about your friend, even if this was some time ago. Ten years ago, a classmate's parents let me stay in their home while I was looking for a job in post-2008 America. I went to my bedroom, sat on the edge of my bed, and called my then-girlfriend on the phone to break up with her. She was 3,000 miles away. After the demoralizing phone call, teary-eyed, I noticed that there was a gray cat on my pillow. I just sat there, puzzled and heartbroken, watching that cat lick his paw. I rubbed my eyes and looked again. Still there. The cat dissolved like a hologram. I went to the couple who owned the home and told them what I saw. They opened a picture album and they showed me the cat. They told me that it died a few years back and liked to chill in my bedroom, often on top of the bed's pillows. Still to this day, the most confusing thing I have witnessed as far as believing or not believing in the supernatural. When I was around 17 or 18, I'm now 23, I worked at a cinema which is notoriously haunted. People quit their jobs from seeing things. Multiple people I know claim to have heard unexplainable voices, laughs, cries, doors locking, being knocked on when no one's around, that sort of thing. I was working on the food counter and a guy in a wheelchair came in and said, look after your body, kid, in an extremely haunting fashion. Me, being an immature drug enthusiast, laughed it off, and I'll never forget the look he gave me when I giggled at what he said. It's almost like I can still see his face and hear how he said it. I've had sleep paralysis with the guy's face staring back at me. Creepy shit. But the funny thing is, shortly after this is when I started experiencing crazy health problems. Loss of controls over my bowels, bladder, pain in legs, arms, etc. I clearly didn't listen to his advice. Smoking, drinking, doing pills, sniffing anything that can be sniffed, basically just abusing my body to a high extent. I can't help but think this guy was some sort of messenger, something warning me about the path I was about to go down. Sometime in the early 90s, let's say like 90 to 92, I was 10 years old or so at a park playing with a lot of children. We all heard a loud explosion and looked up. This was the first time I had ever heard an actual sonic boom. What we saw, I can only describe as a gymnast baton floating through the air silently while rotating, like when a gymnast chucks their baton into the air and it's flipping. It was rather high up in the sky where planes fly, but it was bigger than a plane. It was silent, the shaft was silver, and the ends were these large red geodesic dome type things, like a dodecahedron. Behind it were two F-16s that had scrambled after it. The UFO was silent as an owl. All the kids ran to our respective parents and chaos ensued. Imagine a group of screaming 10-year-olds trying to explain to our parents what we just saw. This was the only time I saw something unidentifiable with other people. Okay, I'm pretty sure some of my recurring viewers are thinking the same thing I'm thinking. Literally, in my last video, I had somebody send me a story where they saw essentially the exact same thing. In the story from last week's video, they described this thing as being a, quote, shiny cylindrical object flying overhead. They also described hearing the same sonic boom as well, and apparently in that story, it woke up everybody they were camping with. I'm definitely struggling to find a logical explanation for this one. Um, we should start a little bit of a discussion or something in the comments. Um, I'll be in there if we want to start a little thread, and we should kind of pick apart what this could have been. It was about 4.30 in the afternoon on a bright and sunny California day. I was driving a coworker home after our shift. We were going to smoke weed at his place. 
About a block from his apartment building, an animal of some sort darts in front of my car. It was running too quickly for me to get a good look at it, but this was sadly not my first experience having hit an animal with a vehicle before. A coyote ran in front of my family's car on a trip to Yosemite when I was a child, so I was familiar with the distinct crunch of a car running over an animal. Worried that I just killed someone's dog that got loose, I immediately pulled over to the side of the road and started looking around for the poor animal. It wasn't in the street, so I figured it must have kept running off while injured. I looked in the direction that it came from, and the direction that I figured it must have continued running, and there was no sign of any animal at all. I inspected my car for damage, and there was nothing. No blood, no fur, it was as if I hadn't hit anything at all. Shaken up, my coworker and I agreed to skip smoking weed that afternoon. His apartment wasn't even a full block away from where I hit whatever it is that I hit, so I quickly dropped him off and start to go home. While waiting at a red light, I glanced down the street towards where the collision occurred and saw something that I cannot explain, nor will I ever forget. It wasn't a dog. It more closely resembled a deer, but it was all wrong. It was massive. It had to be at least eight feet tall, including its antlers. It was entirely black and unnaturally thin, as if its skin was clinging to its bones. What freaked me out the most was that it was limping. This was definitely what I hit with my car, but how? How could I have hit something so huge and not noticed it? How could something so big not leave any trace of damage on my car? The light turned green and I drove forward. I immediately made an illegal U-turn after the intersection because I needed to get a second look at whatever this thing was. But when I brought my car back around again, it was gone without a trace, as if it had vanished into thin air. I consider myself a logical and rational person, but I have no earthly idea what I hit with my car that day. Back more than a year ago now, I experienced something that still shakes me to think about. When I used to visit my now ex-boyfriend who lives hours away from me, we were chilling in bed together in the middle of the night when he had to go to the bathroom. Mind you, he lived in a small apartment with just one bathroom and one bedroom, which we were in. I was having trouble sleeping, like tossing and turning, etc. What seemed like minutes went by, and he never came back to the bedroom. So, like a normally concerned person, I went to the bathroom, which was just outside of the bedroom, and he wasn't there. No lights on, no toilet running, just pure darkness. I thought at first that he was just f***ing with me and hiding somewhere else in the room. I looked in the living room to see if he was possibly watching TV, but he wasn't there either, just his mother sleeping on the couch. I even looked in the closet and under the bed, and I still couldn't find him. As a last resort, I looked all around the building and ran down the halls calling for him, and there was nobody around. When I got back to their apartment, he was sitting on the floor right in front of the couch watching the TV. I asked him, where have you been this entire time? He told me something like, I've just been sitting here watching TV. I was fucking terrified, bamboozled, and scared. I still have no clue what to think about this. More than a year has now passed. This dream began with me opening a white bedroom door. I immediately could tell it was night and it was summertime. There were no signs to say it was summer, I just knew right away. On the bed, I see my friend, who for this story we'll call Alex. Right away, I notice Alex was around 5 years old and he was crying. Not little tears, screaming and sobbing, and while he's doing this, I'm looking around the room seeing many different posters, trophies, and toys. I asked Alex why he was crying, and right away I felt like the script that I was watching had been broken. He told me that his grandpa was dead, and that it was the worst feeling ever. After that, my actions were no longer my own. I pet him on his head and tucked him under the blanket. Next, Alex dropped a stuffed dog toy that he'd been sleeping with. It fell under his bed somehow while he was crying, and I went down to pick it up, telling him goodnight. There was a blue LED light that lit up the room. The next morning I woke up and I was afraid it was a warning, either Alex's family were dealing with a death in the family or it was a symbolic dream that my grandfather was going to pass away soon. After much thought, I spoke to Alex alone about my dream. Honestly, what he told me freaked me out more than the dream had. 
Alex told me that what I saw wasn't a dream. His grandfather passed away almost a decade ago when he was a young child. We figured out that it was a memory that occurred from his mother's perspective. I somehow, while in a dream state, had seen things from his mother's perspective and had seen everything the exact way she had. The more we talked, the more Alex's memories had been catching up to him. He realized the setup of his room, the stuffed animal, his mother petting him, and the blue LED lights were all correct to the exact details. The most frightening part is that we knew each other at that age, but we weren't friends then, and this had occurred in his old house. Even today, I have never seen his room, not even on FaceTime, so I had no way of knowing all these details, especially on such an in-depth level. Our friends around us didn't believe us. In fact, very few people believe me, and I honestly don't blame them. I told my parents since they know I've gotten many future dreams, but never before did I get a past dream. But Alex and I know that there's no explanation for what happened. I get so many interesting stories about people's dreams and just strange things they saw. Um, like one recurring theme is those premonition dreams that I get sent. But other times we get these very unique dreams like this one. I find it strange that they describe the feeling of there being a sort of script here. Almost like this was supposed to be an experience rather than this being something they were actively supposed to participate in. It's also very strange that they remember all these tiny little details about Alex's childhood bedroom, which apparently they confirmed with them later on. Three weeks ago, my cat died in my arms. Our bond was remarkable. I found him as a kitten. He was crossing a dangerous country road, so I stopped, opened my door, and he just jumped into my lap and curled up there. I was his. I'm an animal lover and I've had special pets, but Solomon was almost like a familiar to me. I knew something bad had happened because he always came to me when I called him. I searched every square inch of my house, the woods and the land around the house and each neighbor's properties for days. I even arranged to bring in search dogs. I'm telling you, if he was out there, I would have found him. I was devastated. Then Wednesday came around. By this time, most of the friends and family members helping me search were exhausted and losing hope. Can't lie, I was too. At dusk, I prepared to turn in. My body ached and my spirit was broken, but... I was just so damn restless. So, setting out solo for the first time, I leashed up my dog and decided to walk the property one last time. And that's when he found me. I was losing light when I spotted him out of the corner of my eye, sitting on the bank opposite the creek, a place I had already searched a dozen times. I called to him and he looked towards me, almost as if he was searching my face to make sure it was really me before responding, and then literally bolted towards the house. Something was strange about this interaction, but we'll come back to that at the end. So I ran back up to the house, went down to the spot where I had seen him, and searched all around the woods with the light that I had left. The entire time though, I felt pulled toward the cellar another place I had also searched many times. And in the cellar he was. I knew as soon as I started down the steps. He answered my calls this time, the way he always has, but he was not right. He could not move. It turns out he threw a saddle thrombus, a massive blood clot, cutting off all circulation to his hind legs and tail. Solomon could not walk let alone move or sprint across acres to make it from his spot by the bank to the cellar in just the few minutes between those two encounters. He purred from the moment I picked him up until the very second he threw major clots to his lungs and brain three hours later. He died in my arms. My Solomon found me in the beginning and he found me again at the very end. I cannot explain what I saw or how it happened. Even the vet agrees that there was no way that it would have been physically possible for him to have run from the spot that I saw him. I don't understand what this experience was, but I'm starting to believe that he found a way to come back to me as the end was nearing. Tonight, I spent the night at my girlfriend's house as I do often. 
There was a brief 10 or so minute period where we went to her sister's room and just talked with her. We had returned to my girlfriend's room after this short amount of time to where she could not find her phone, so as most people would do, I FaceTimed it so she could find it in the midst of all the blankets. Within a few seconds, the phone was found and she jokingly answered and said hello. I made a funny looking face with my tongue sticking out and she jokingly made a WTF kind of face and then hung up. However, that's the weird part. When the call was hung up from my phone speakers, there was a giggle. Her giggle, which was a very distinct sound that we both knew well. In person, as we sat on her bed, there was no giggle, just the face that she was giving back to me. At first, I thought nothing of it, like, oh, maybe I'm just hearing things. Then she goes on to talk about the face I was making, but then adds, I don't think I laughed, though. Then I knew it really happened. We both think it's extremely creepy and strange. There were five of us in Steve's car that day. Steve sat at the wheel, Ethan beside him in the passenger seat, and there was I sitting in the back squeezed between Jenny to my right and James on the left. We were parked in front of Jenny's house trying to decide where to go eat lunch. There was an intersection about five to seven minutes away that had quite a few fast food restaurants to pick from, one of which was Wendy's and the other was Harvey's. Those were the two options being discussed. Now, I do know that area pretty well, but I didn't drive through it very often as it was quite north of my neighborhood and also north of all of our friends' places. At some point, everyone decided to go to Harvey's, and that's when I heard Jenny beside me say out loud, but it's closed. I turned my head towards her and asked, what do you mean it's closed? It's lunchtime. Why would they be closed at this time? She looked at me confused and said, I didn't say anything. Now I'm confused because I clearly heard her say, but it's closed, out loud. It wasn't a voice in my head. I heard it out of my right ear. She said again, I didn't say anything. Let's go. I'm hungry. Steve put the car in drive and we made our way to Harvey's. I figured she probably said, let's go, and I heard, it's closed, but she didn't say anything, apparently. Weird. Just under 10 minutes later, we arrive at the Harvey's parking lot to find it's actually closed, with a huge sign that said, closed for renovation. We were all stunned for a few seconds. Everyone stared at me and said nothing. We just drove across the street and went to eat at Wendy's as if nothing happened. Nothing else was said about the matter. Everyone was just creeped out. 